Okay, so let's start uh, with the question about the beginnings of the Troops of Doom. So uh, how uh, the Troops of Doom formed, uh, how you found uh, other members? Okay, we were friends already. I mean, uh, we were friends from, we are friends from more than 20 years. Uh, Alex Kaffer, the singer and ba bass player, he is my, one of my closest uh, friends from the time I was uh, playing with uh, Sepultura. Uh, he's a very close friend from me. And, and uh, uh, I met Marcelo Vasco uh, 15, 20, 12, 15 years ago. So uh, we became friends also. And uh, in 2015, we were trying to to join a band, to, to you know, to join a band together. So uh, we actually we were only three of us. We we didn't have a drummer at the time. And uh, so Marcelo and I we we spoke to some some people about uh, singing on this project. Uh, Alex Kaffer uh, would be only the the the, the bass player. So we actually spoke with uh, Stian Chagrat from from Dimu Borg, and he 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 said okay, but uh, we couldn't uh, do live gigs, so uh, we have uh, we had to. If you wanted to do this to go with uh, this project, we had to do it only uh, like a studio project, and uh, because of Dimu Borg and Chrome Division and and you know everybody's life, so. We decided to not uh, go on with uh, this project, so uh, we start thinking about this uh, in the beginning of the 2020 uh, at the pandemic times. So we uh, we were, you know, uh, stuck at in, in inside our home, and uh, so I I asked the guys so we could put the band together and find a a drummer. And maybe Alex could sing and play bass, and well, uh, we made that way, and uh, we're very happy with this. Okay, <clears throat> so uh, the cover art of Antichrist Reborn is yeah really similar uh, to Bestial Devastations and Morbid Visions. Uh, yeah, interesting uh, is fact that uh, both were made by the same artist. Uh, so, did you want uh, to have cover like that from the beginning, and uh, why? Yes, we, we we wanted to do that. Actually, we have uh, two uh, EPs before that. This is our full, first full album, but uh, we have we have the Rise of Heresy and the Absence of Light EPs. But uh, we we chose uh, different artists for those those EPs. Uh, so Marcelo Vasco himself he did the first one and 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 a friend from me um, a friend of mine from portugal mahangoni he, he did the second one the absence of light uh the antichrist reborn cover art was uh was something we we were uh wishing to do uh, for a long time ask the the same guy from the best child of a station to do that because it's the you know he has the same vibe and the same, you know, uh, way of life. So we 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 are, we have also. So uh, uh, he's a very close friend of mine. He lives in Belo Horizonte also, in, in my town. So uh, I call him one day and ask him to do that. He only asked me, "What what do you want me to do? I mean, uh, you know, give me give me the path to do it in, in the direction." So I, I said to him, uh, "Let's do it something like." A couple hours after the best child devastation, you know, like uh, the devil is inside the the church now, <laughs> yeah. and uh, and uh, use the same, you know, the same colors. That that's it. And uh, he used uh, the he did use the same palette color, and and uh, we're very happy. And uh, it's it's a great cover. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, what were your biggest uh, inspirations uh, musical during uh, making of Antichrist Reborn? Well, uh, 
I never changed my 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 influences, my musical influences. I mean, too much. I I I like and I I start to like and love new bands from 2000, 1999 until now, but not so much. So uh, not too much bands. So uh, I I keep the same influences from the 80s. You know, like. Uh, Creator, Death, Slayer, Celtic Frost, uh, Celtic Frost, as you said, uh, Hellhammer, you know, things like that, Possessed. So uh, that's the band. I, I still like it and I, I listen to the, this band every day. So uh, uh, it's the same influences uh, all my life. So it's not different than the Antichrist Reborn. Okay. So, uh, album was mixed by mighty Peter Tagdgren. Uh, why you chose him to uh, mix Antichrist Reborn? Well, he he made a. I was talking to Jeff Becerra from Possessed, and 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 Peter made uh, a first mix for them, and uh, I, I don't know. I don't think they use it, but uh, Jeff told me. The, you know the style of your of your band of troops of doom it's it's something like you, you're gonna like peter work peter's work so you 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 gotta keep in touch with him as soon as possible so i i i i, I call him and uh he was like okay uh, we can do it uh i have a tour in a couple of months so we have to do it now if you want it so uh I, I I need to do to to get the you know the mixing and 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 mastering of this album in December last year so uh, December of 2002 so uh, I decided to do to you know to take the risk because I I didn't I I, I never worked with him before in my life so uh, I took the risk and I I became you know happy and and proud of the work and uh he's amazing he's a genius <laughs> yeah he was pretty fast also <laughs> yeah all albums he did uh, as a musician or as a mixer amazing all amazing yes uh so on antichrist reborn there are a few guests uh alex camargo and moise coleste from Crisin in uh Necromancer, yes. Uh, uh, Sepultura cover. Uh, also legendary João Gordo from Ratos de Porao. Uh, yeah. And also on the Absence of Light, uh, right? Uh, EP, there is uh, Jeff Becerra from uh, Possessed. So, yes. yeah, I mean, you're a legend in Brazil, battle legend, yes. Uh, you played on Bestial Devastation and uh, Morbid Visions. And you're a sub kind of idol for uh, Moyes and Alex. But how you collaborated with all of them? Well, they they always wanted to to work with me one one day or another. So uh, we made some gigs together. Uh, we made we played Necromancer together on the Sepultura DVD from 2004, I think. Yeah. Uh, we, we played together on the same stage, so uh, we became friends. I'm uh, pretty older than than the guys, so uh, they they start Crisium after Sepultura, Bestial, and Mob Divisions album. So uh, we were like uh, Sepultura, me and Max and Igor and Paulo. We were like uh, we were a big influence for for the for the brothers from Crisium, uh, for the three of them. So. Um, I was thinking about them when when we when we decided to to make uh, a re re recording of uh, Necromancer. So I I asked them to do it, and they did, and it was amazing, and um, and I appreciate that a lot. And um, well, João Gordo from Ratos de Porão, he's a he's a very old friend, and a very close old friend, and. Uh, uh, we made uh, the song "A Queda." It's in Portuguese, and it it's um, 
it has to be in Portuguese because we we wanted to to you know to people from Brazil, Portugal, and and some Latin countries in Latin America to understand better. You know, not only the the, the music but the lyrics itself, uh, because it talks about. Uh, I wrote this song with Alex, and uh, we are talking about the evangelical uh, religious. So uh, it's a kind of problem in uh, in the Latin countries. You know, it's uh, it's a kind of virus. And uh, I mean, I respect religions, but uh, we have a lot of uh, this kind of uh, preachers stolen money from the people, you know, and uh, it's a yeah. uh, it's a shame for us. So I, I, I our intention was to make it in make it this song in Portuguese. And then, uh, you know, the best singer in Portuguese in Brazil is it's João Gordo. So <laughs> we asked him to do it and uh, it was great. And concerning to Jeff Becerra, uh, I called him once uh, to do the 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 part of uh, the part of of uh, absence of light on the on the monarch song, um, and uh, he was at the hospital at the time I called him, and uh, he told me, "Man, I, I'm 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 I was uh, operated now, and uh, I'm, I was in the surgery, and uh, I'm I'm a little bit uh, you know tired, but I would do it as soon as I get home next week." So. One week later, he sent me. Uh, he was recording the the lyric and and the vocal. Uh, he was on the bed, you know. He was like uh, lying on the bed and and with a cellular on the, on the mobile phone, recording like this, you know, like in the mic of the mobile phone. So, <laughs> so it was amazing. We didn't use you know microphones, professional microphones. I, I mean, and uh, was great. And so uh, he sent to us the the, the song and uh, I mean the vocals, and we we put it together, we mix it at, in, in our studio, and then Alex, our singer, told me like said to me like, uh, okay, but uh, Jeff Becerra has his own kind of screams, he's screaming like uh, only like Jeff Becerra, and in, in the old Possessed albums. We need a scream like that. So he, he he didn't do it at the first time. And then I called him again and said, hey, Jeff, would you send me some screams? And uh, and he sent me three. OK, you can choose it. <laughs> so we, we use the three of, of them. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah. He's a very nice uh, guy, a very, very, very nice. Yeah. Uh, so when we were setting our interview, you said uh, that you uh, had a session, a studio session. Uh, so can you tell me what uh, were you recording? Well, I, I was uh, recording with my my other uh, band. I have another band in, in, uh, with uh, the the ex drummer from the Mist, uh, the the other band I played after Sepultura, oh, yeah. and uh, with uh, he played with me at the uh, at the the Hangman Three album. Uh, we had a band together, me, Chris, and uh, and a guy from France, from Paris. So uh, it's a different kind of music. I mean, it's a, it's a little bit different from. It's nothing to do with the uh, death metal, you know. Uh, death metal, it's my, you know, it's my life. But uh, I also like dark bands. I also like bands like Paradise Lost, Moonspell, Sisters of Mercy, uh, yeah. the Past Mode bands like that from the eighties. So uh, now we are doing this uh, first debut album. So we, we are recording our our project now. And the Troops of Doom, we, we, we just finished the tour last week, uh, last Sunday. Now we are taking a rest and we will start to produce the new album, the new full album uh, in June. But uh, well, we live in uh, different states in Brazil. Brazil, it's a very, very big country. So uh, yeah. we live very far away from each other. So, uh, I mean, it's 2000 kilometers from me, uh, from my home to Marcelo's house, my other guitar player. So, and Alex lives in Rio de Janeiro. It's like uh, 600 kilometers from here. 
So we have to do everything uh, by our own home, you know, our own homes. And um, I have my studio here, a small studio. They have the, their studios there. So we, we, we put the ideas together and we are sending by WhatsApp, we are sending our ideas and mixing. I mean, just trying to mix something and then, okay, this is okay. Let's try to do this and that. And when we are, when we finish a song, we go to a, so we travel and we go to a studio together, but we didn't decide yet where we're going to record the next album. Okay. So, uh, yeah, you said that uh, you uh, finished the uh, tour last week and uh, yeah, I don't know uh, many things about your concert activity. So please tell me more, more about that. Uh, you. You played. Uh, you are playing uh, other songs than this from uh, "Absence of Light," "Rise of Heresy," and uh, "Antichrist Reborn" on your set list. Yes, yes. We we start this tour in in November last week last year. Uh, we start we start this tour uh, with uh, "I Am Orbit." So we we were open act for "I Am Orbit," and uh, it was it was very nice tour because uh, you know. David Vincent and and Pete Sandoval are, you know, are great friends and they are very funny guys, and uh, also Bill Hudson and every everybody in the band is great. So uh, we made a lot of gigs in Brazil and uh, in the major cities, and then we went to uh, South America, Argentina, Peru, Chile, uh, you know, Colombia and places like that. So we. We stopped the tour in January, then we start again in February and uh, we without the uh, Iron Orbit. So we, we made only uh, cities in Brazil and festivals and uh, with a lot of bands like uh, Crypta, uh, Dorsal Atlantica, uh, well, a lot of bands. Uh, Incantation, we did last week uh, three gigs with Incantation and uh, John McEntee is also a very nice guy. And we had a, a really nice time together. So we played uh, songs from the, the two first EPs, from The Rise of Heresy, The Absence of Light, and also some songs from uh, The Antichrist Reborn. And in this tour, uh, we decided to play uh, some songs from uh, Sepultura from the 80s. I mean, some uh, songs songs where I am I, I also an author. And so we played Necromancer, Mob Divisions, Best Child Devastation, and Troops of Doom. That's it. Actually, yeah. Troops of Doom is the song we finish our concerts every night. It's great. <laughs> yeah, I thought so, because uh, I mean, the Troops of Doom is still some kind of anthem for anthem for Sepultura and uh, Cavalera. Yes. Okay, so, so uh, as we are talking about concerts, do you have uh, some plans for a uh, European tour? Yes, we have plans, but not uh, not now. I mean, we, we, we will start to produce the new album and it, you know it's a lot of uh, hard work. We have this, uh, our label, uh, our record label, it's Alma Mater from uh, Portugal and they are also helping us to find a good uh, tour agents in Europe uh, so we can play in Europe. Uh, I, I, I made a lot of gigs in Europe in my life, but uh, and I never played with, uh, I mean, under a, a, a tour agents, booking agents, you know, something like that. I, I was always with local producers and friends. So I went to Poland uh, two times. I went to uh, Czech Republic three times. I went to Switzerland four times. So uh, it's not uh, easy to do like that. Uh, so uh, our intention now is to, to find uh, a good uh, and very honest uh, uh, booking agents so we can put a tour together and, and, and do it as soon as possible. Yes. So uh, let's talk for a moment about your time with Sepultura. Uh, yep. 
a bit a bit weird question uh, from the perspective of time uh, how would you rate uh, bestial devastations and uh, morbid visions the, there is something that uh, you would uh, do better now or maybe you are really proud of something there no, actually, I'm I'm very proud of uh, of of those those uh, two albums. I'm very very proud. In 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 Europe, I think it's one album, right? It's uh, they put together the best show in yeah, yeah yeah as an album. But uh, in Brazil, it feels like an EP and a, and a full album. Uh, I'm very proud of it. I'm very proud of it. When I decided to re-record uh, some of those songs with uh, my new band, the Troops of Doom. Uh, my intention was to make a homage. It's you know like uh, I, I was I, I I am proud of it, and I would like to record it in a better uh, way using some tools uh, from modern tools, but uh, without changing anything. So uh, I, I don't I I still don't want to change anything in the in those albums. They are perfect for me. I I, I mean and. Uh, what was the best we could do at the time? We were like 16 years old, so uh, Igor was like 15 years old. So uh, we we were we were were children, and uh, you know people from the studio. I mean the, the 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 owners of the studios and the producers. They didn't want children in inside the studio, so uh, we had to do it as fast as we can. You know, like uh, as we could at the time. So. Uh, People are asking us to leave the studio, so uh, so let, let's make it. Uh, Best of devastation was recorded in one day and mixed it, mix it in, in another one day. So two, a couple of days to do that that album. So yeah, it's not perfect in a in a in a in a engineering sound and something like that. We didn't know how to tune our guitars already, so uh, so uh, at the time, so. Uh, now I want to, you know, I I I I did want to re record some of those songs, especially the songs I love mo mo most in those do those two albums, in a better way for our my fans and friends. You know, this is the song I want you to to hear to listen, but without change anything in the sound, uh, only on the on the mix. So. Uh, that's it. That's it. We we are proud. I mean, me, Max, Igor, Paulo, everyone. Yeah, yeah. Like you see, this uh, best of devastations and morbid visions. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, two albums in uh, one CD. Uh, okay. So, uh, do you have uh, some special plans for the nearest future, except uh, producing an album, new album? Well, we are we are uh, releasing our uh, our first uh, how do you call this uh, collection toys? You know, like uh, small toys like superheroes. So we are releasing uh, next month. We will release the the devil from the Antichrist Reborn and Best of Devastation cover up. So uh, it's uh, it's very nice. It's a very nice. Uh, it's a very nice uh, doll, you know, like like big, and with the with the wings open and 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 the church. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, was, I saw it. I saw it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's it's very nice. So uh, we are doing that, and uh, yeah, that's it. And uh, and then we 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 have maybe three or four big shows to do it in Brazil, yet. But uh, I mean, one per month. Nothing, uh, not nothing like a tour. So we go play and, and come back home because we are we have to, you know, to focus on the on the new album. Okay. So uh, yeah, another bit weird question, but I mean, yeah, kind of normal. Uh, what were your goals during uh, making music for uh, Antichrist Reborn? Did you uh, wanted? Did you want to get something? You know something special like uh did you have some criteria to in making songs 
Well, no, uh, actually, I, I have the inspiration. Uh, uh, every day I, I woke up in the morning, like, you know, a new inspiration. And uh, I make songs every day. So we have a lot of songs. I have a lot of songs for my, my uh, side project also. And uh, uh, then we talk about those, those riffs. And uh, I show some riffs. Marcelo Vasco sent me some riffs also. Uh, everything starts with the guitar uh, in the Troops of Doom. So we send it to the drummer and, and to Alex. And when we decided to do that, that uh, you know, when we put everything together and we made a song, we start to work on the lyrics. So I, I, I start or, or Alex starts in a lyric or someone brings an idea. And sometimes we, we like to make something like uh, uh, a conceptual album or, or songs or three songs uh, as we did in, a, in, the, in the absence of light uh, was inspired by a book I was reading at the time. Uh, so uh, we decided to do a conceptual album, but not uh, Antichrist Reborn. Antichrist Reborn is it's an album you know, like the other albums of other bands, like a, a regular album with the uh, ten songs, different songs, and no conceptual. Uh, but the next one, the next album, we will start to roll to write now. I, I I am thinking about using maybe three songs as a conceptual idea. You know, maybe. Okay. So uh, not so long ago, you released a uh, um, compilation, uh, Pro to Blasphemy, yes. Uh, so that's a compilation of uh, Absence of Light and uh, Rise of Heresy. And there, uh, there are uh, two new songs, uh, the 1666 and uh, Guts Orphans, yeah, right? Yes, uh, yes. So uh, we'll... Will these songs uh, be on the next album? Is is it some kind of trailer of the mm, new material from you? Well, maybe uh, maybe one of those two songs. Uh, yes, but uh, it's important to say that the, the, those songs, uh, "Gods of Nature" and, and "One Six Six Six," they were. Uh, oh, they are old songs, actually, because they were almost done when we recorded the absence of light. But we didn't uh, wanted to put those songs on the Antichrist Reborn full album. So uh, we kind of we forget the songs for a while, and then we we wanted to uh, put the two we piece together on, on in, in one piece. Uh, it's it's easiest for it's easier for the you know for the fan and and people around the world to to buy the two uh, EPs together in one piece. So we put it together and we we start to you know to rework on a, uh, we start again to work on the, on those two songs and until we finish them. And uh, yeah, I, I think maybe can be a, a kind of a prelude to, to, to the next album. I, I think so, maybe, yeah. We are looking forward to produce uh, and to create a very aggressive and uh, very, you know, old school death metal style on the next album, yes. Okay. Yeah, I already ordered uh, Prelude to Blasphemy, so I will uh, have all of your records because I already have Antichrist Reborn. So, uh, in, in your opinion, uh, what are the biggest advantage, advantage, advantages and uh, like uh, the best sides of uh, Antichrist Reborn? You mean, I didn't understand, sorry. Uh... Uh, like uh, the best sides, the best parts of Antichrist Reborn in your opinions? Well, in my opinion, uh... Well, first of all, the mix of uh, Peter <laughs> is great. And, uh, you know, it's very open. It's very modern without being modern too much. You know, it's like yeah. he, he kept the, 
the, the old school style and, and put it in a modern way. So uh, it's very good. Uh, I think the, the, you know, the aggression in the musics and, uh, and, and in the songs, I, I love a lot of riffs like Far From Your God and, and songs like that, you know, are the best for me. And uh, Altar of Delusion, uh, well, I love those, those songs. And uh, I love the, the, the cover we made for Celtic Frost uh, in the album. So uh, uh, I, I, I wish we can play it live one day. We didn't uh, until now. So that's it. Uh, and I, and I, I love our, our way of, uh, you know, of uh, our aesthetic, you know, like the visual aesthetic of uh, the Troops of Doom, you know, the covers. Uh, the art covers, the the booklets, you know, like uh, in, uh, in in two weeks or maybe three weeks, uh, you guys in Europe will have the the Prelude to Blasphemy CD, so uh, by by Alma Maters from Portugal. But uh, so you 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 see the the booklet of this album. It's amazing, you know. It's uh, it's uh, we made like a very old school death and trash metal, like a lot of photographs from okay. family, friends and everything. And uh, we love this static, you know, like like, uh, uh, like the old school way. So I, I, lo I love the album. I mean, I mean, there's a lot of points I love in, the, in, in that album. And uh, I wish we can do better in the next one. OK, so uh, time for um four uh, short questions uh in your opinion which uh, song uh, by troops of doom uh, defines uh, your style best wow it's a hard one eh? so uh well i think uh the the first one we did uh, the rise of heresy it's the song uh, we love to play live and uh it, it it looks more like us. Okay. So uh, the other question is: a few weeks ago, uh, Max and Igor Cavalera uh, released the first single from uh, re-recorded version of Morbid Visions and uh, Best in Devastations. You've probably seen it. So, uh, what do you think about this uh, idea? Well, I I never thought about. Uh, making a whole record again, you know, like uh, it's it's not my style. I I I I don't want to do that with the troops of doom, never. But uh, well, it you know it's uh, they have the right to do it, and uh, I I I wouldn't do it, but they have the right to do it. And uh, I only listened to one song, like the Mob Division song. And it's great. I mean, I, I I love the song, but I think they they changed a little bit. You know, like uh, it's a little bit hardcore for me, and uh, especially the 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 voice of Max. I I would like him to to sing as as he was singing in in, in other songs from you know from Soulfly and from Cavalera and even Sepultura in the past. So. Uh, I think it's a little bit, you know, screaming and 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 hardcore. So, but it's not it's not bad. I mean, it's a it's another it's another view of the song. But uh, well, I wish I wish uh, I wish to hear the to listen to the whole album, you know, uh, yeah. so I can have an opinion. <laughs> yeah, uh, there are also uh, yeah. They saying uh, that uh, two old songs from uh, that time. Uh, is that true? You know these songs uh, before? Well, no, I, 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 I didn't. Uh, I don't know if uh, maybe maybe it's uh, it's from uh, old some old riffs because we didn't have uh, when I left Sepultura. Uh, we didn't have old songs. I mean, completely done. You know, and and without releasing. So uh, we release and record everything we did. We had 
ideas of 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 riffs and and parts of songs we didn't record it so uh maybe he he you know he gets one of of uh he gets one of of, of those tape decks from the rehearsals and uh and maybe he use uh He's using uh, one of those riffs or some of those riffs. I don't know. I don't know. I I, I have to listen to these uh, 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 unreleased songs, and uh, and then I I can understand if it's uh, an old one or or, or not. You know? Okay. So uh, now two sh questions that I am asking every musician that I am talking with. Uh, your favorite album of all time. Wow. What is it? Well, my favorite out of album of all time. It's uh, Allied Two from Kiss. Uh, that's my favorite one. Okay. I was thinking, I was I was thinking about Hellweights from Slayer because <laughs> I listen to the that album. I mean, every day in my life, but. Uh, his was the first one. Yeah. Okay. Was a key. And uh, what is your favorite band of all time? Well, my favorite band is, is uh, also Kiss. Uh, it's uh, the band I started to, uh, you know, to be interested in in rock and roll market and everything. Yeah. Okay. So. And the first the first Copsy Paint band I knew. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, okay, so that's all. That's all my questions. Thank you, Jairo. Okay, Thomas. Okay.